Hinduism is roughly 4,000 years old, one of the oldest religions there is, at least one of the oldest major religions. Um, it's not really known to have a founder. There's a wide, wide variety of beliefs and practices within this religion. Um, so it's really hard to say exactly what they believe in, exactly what they do. You know, I can kind of give you a, a, a basic framework for, for what they have. Um, India oh, is over a billion followers, and most of them are in India. That makes them the third largest world religion. And you know, there's not many around here. And if there are, they don't speak about it much. They're not they're not evangelists. They're not trained to evangelize and share their faith. They're just a large group of people, especially in India. Um, they have three primary gods: Brahma, the creator; Vishnu, the preser preserver; and Shiva, the destroyer. They also believe in Brahman who is an impersonal, universal essence behind everything. And that, that, that idea of impersonal is important in the East. Um, th this idea of Brahman is, is prevalent in almost a lot of these Eastern I ideas, you know, Eastern philosophies and religions where like there's like this general force behind everything. So basically they take God and pull off his personality and just say he's a force or a, an essence, you know. Um, so... Brahman sounds, when they describe it, sounds a lot like our God. You know, this kind of this kind of omnipotent, uh, omnipresent thing. You know, but just no personality, no desire, no desire for personal connection. Um, so basically, a depersonalization of God. Um, and they think he's unknowable; he can't be known, right? And uh, they worship millions of other gods. Yes. So and they have a collection of book called the vedas which is you know a bunch of just old, old writings of with uh, various topics throughout it um they believe you're reincarnated for thousands of lives um there's an older belief that's not always believed anymore called the caste system where when you're reincarnated your karma which is what what we know as karma kind of your your good deeds builds up and and you actually climb a social ladder as you get higher uh in this caste system um, so like your next life, you'll be like a king or something, you know, <laughs> um, the goal is to achieve moksha, uh, moksha is release or li liberation from the cycle of reincarnation. That's kind of their idea of heaven or nirvana. Um, this is accomplished through self-realization, wisdom, connection to their gods, karma, yoga, removing attachments, nonviolence, and duties. Um, so similarities to Buddhism that you that you see there. Uh, so witnessing to them, basically, you know, a lot of times I'll start with points of agreement. Like, hey, I, we agree that there are a lot of gods out there. Okay, like in Christianity, we believe in a lot of gods. They all exist, but they're angels and demons. They're things that God created. All right, they're, but they're not things to be worshipped because if you worship something that's not God, that thing has its own personality, its own desires. It may not be the right thing for everybody. It's not going to be the right thing for everyone. They can mislead you. They're not right. They're, they're, it's not the right. It's like following a person. Like that person can let you down. These these gods, these little g gods, these uh, little deities, they, they are people. They have personalities. They're like people. And like you don't worship a person because that person can let you down. And so can these little gods, you know. But the great God, the one true God, won't never let you down. You know, he will never mislead you. If you're misled, that's your own fault. It's not his. <laughs> but uh, these little gods, these little deities, they can let you down. And they can mislead you. And they can lie to you. And they can have their own personal agenda that may not have your your uh, benefit in, in, the, in mind. Jesus proved his superiority. We want to emphasize Jesus' superiority. He proved his superiority on the cross and by in the resurrection and by fulfilling prophecies that were written hundreds of years before. So we can emphasize historic Jesus, the cross, and that we can know God through Christ. You know, if, they, if they're going to associate God with Brahman, like, okay, but we, you need to know that you can know God at a personal, intimate level, and that God wants to know you and has reached out to you through Jesus Christ. And also that you don't worship other gods. God says you don't worship other gods. All right? So you have to take all these millions of Hindu gods that you worship, throw them out the window. They don't, they're, they're not for your best benefit. They're, they're not the best for you. Through Contact with God through Jesus at a personal level that you can know him. That's right. 
Um, Does astrology tie into any of these, or is that some a separate entity all? <laughs> yeah, uh, they do a lot of astrology. Yeah, 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 that's rooted in a lot of the yeah, a lot of the Eastern, a lot of these Eastern religions do a lot of that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And what happens is you end up with confirmation bias, like. You, you read the little astrological sign, and uh, you end up just going like, oh, yeah, like this part of it looks like my personality. Or you kind of attach that idea to your personality. Like you, They're so vague, everybody can be every sign. You read every single sign, and you go, oh, yeah, I'm all these. These all describe me, because they all describe basic human traits, you know? And, uh, and so then people, you get confirmation bias. Like, oh, yeah, see, look, I do it there. And, you know, so, and, and people want that. And if you want that, you're going to just attach it. And then you're going to start acting like that. And it's like, what's the point? This is no point. This isn't, this isn't guidance for your life. This isn't help for your life. What, what you need to do is not, rec not just recognize, you know, what you are, but also to recognize where you need to go and who you're supposed to be, you know, and astrology is not going to get you that. Um, so we also want to emphasize the differences from their salvation to ours. You know, theirs is like this release into some kind of like, you know, vague bliss. Um, and they have various ideas of what moksha is because they're a very, you know, diverse religion. But the idea is like, you know, this isn't a release from reincarnation into some kind of bliss or something. This is, you get one life, and if you live it right, you get to go be with God for eternity. And heaven is a wonderful place. The Bible has a lot of descriptions about it. So you can have an idea of what it's going to be like. But the point is, one life lived for God. Big difference. Okay? You don't have to go through a thousand reincarnations. Do it right this one time. 